And now, back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. Uh, this Sunday, we just heard from Senator Joe Manchin. One of our own delegates was also in Washington, D.C. this past week, and we want to talk to him about his visit to the White House right now. Let me introduce Delegate Joshua Higginbotham. He's a Republican who represents uh, Mason, Jackson. Putnam, and Jackson County, a threefer. Good That's to have right. you on the show, Josh. Great Good to, to see be you back. Again. So you went to the White House. They were having a conference on Opportunity Zones. Uh, why were you chosen to go and talk about the conference? Well, sure. Well, first, I appreciate being on the show again. Uh, the Opportunity Zone Conference was about West Virginia's Opportunity Zones and, and really all 8,000 Opportunity Zones across the country. Uh, I'm the Chairman of Economic Development in the West Virginia House of Delegates and I was also the lead sponsor on the Opportunity Zone Bill which uh, passed overwhelmingly in the legislature this year. Uh, so that's the reason they invited me. Well, tell us what an Opportunity Zone is. It sounds like a real promising sure. thing. It's a great name, but, well, but what is it designed to do? What does it do? How does it help benefit our economy? Well, it doesn't just sound good. It actually is good, Mark. Uh, what Opportunity Zones are, these are mostly poor communities in rural West Virginia, in urban centers like Charleston and Huntington and Parkersburg. And what it does is it allows to it allows businesses to invest in these areas uh, and and it lowers their taxes in exchange so rather than just lowering taxes for everyone everywhere it says you mark curtis or whoever uh, investor can get lower taxes if you put your money in these poor communities and steve mnuchin Tre treasury secretary who i actually spoke with at the white house believes that more than a hundred billion dollars will be invested in opportunity zones this year alone i want to talk about something that's going on i know one of the opportunity zones if i'm not mistaken in charleston is the east end the west side and Kanawha city yeah. and something has already been going on on our west side here at elk city which is a, a nice little neighborhood that kind of fell on hard times and all of a sudden it's booming again new restaurants are coming yeah. in bookstores coffee shops yeah. uh, it's just great and, and, and so that community is really starting to thrive again Sure, sure. Is that the kind of thing we're looking at here? I believe so. Now, I don't know if they're getting these so. credits or opportunity zones, well, but it, it just seems like that's kind of an incubator for sure. this type of program. Well, it's, it's my understanding that there are numerous businesses involved in that redevelopment project that are benefiting from the opportunity zone. Uh, what it actually does, to, to get into the nitty gritty, it lowers the capital gains tax on pre previous investments. So if you sell your stocks, you gotta pay your capital gains tax, right? right? Uh, instead of paying capital gains, you can get out of that if you invest it for 10 years in the Opportunity Zone. So there are many businesses that are already coming to the Mountain State uh, because of this Opportunity Zone legislation. And what we're trying to do in West Virginia, uh, what we did in the House and, and we're going to take up again during special session, is making our Opportunity Zones the most competitive in the country by eliminating the personal and corporate income tax. And let's talk about that because the House passed it by a big margin, the state yeah. Senate passed it uh, by a huge margin. Yeah. It was vetoed by the governor. Do we know yeah. why and, and what's the fix? Well, it was vetoed, uh, unfortunately this bipartisan bill was vetoed by the governor for technical issues, very, very minor uh, code references. Um, we are fixing it and we are taking it up again here in a few weeks. Uh, during the special session. Let's say there's a community out there in the state, and we know you know the big cities, Charleston, Huntington, Morgantown, Parkersburg, they're probably tapping into this. Oh, yeah. But if you're a smaller community, let's say you're a Sutton or you're an Elkins or yeah. Beckley or something, uh, are there communities out there, how could they get involved in this, If assuming this all gets fixed by the governor? Because I'm sure. sure there's a lot of neighborhoods just like Elk City that oh, yeah. wanna rebound and thrive again. Well, what it takes is good marketing. We need people out there knocking on businesses' doors, making cold calls, and reaching out to them saying you can get out of paying taxes and, and your business can save millions of dollars by coming to West Virginia and moving into this opportunity zone. Uh, we need economic development folks at the local and county levels who are going to do that. Uh, Jackson County is doing exactly that. Almost half of Jackson County is an opportunity zone. We're getting down, we have less than a minute. I've got to ask you, while I got you here, coming up in May, the special yeah. session we anticipate is going to deal with education reform. You've gone to some of these forums in your communities. Sure. What are people telling you? What do you want to see on education reform <laughs> in 30 seconds or less? <laughs> well, everyone wants more school choice. Everyone wants teacher and student accountability, more flexibility. Um, and most of all, we need to make the changes that are best for the students. 
Um, so I, I think that this special session uh, has good policies, but, but uh, we're only halfway there. All right, we want to thank Delegate Joshua Higginbotham, uh, representing Mason, Putnam, and Jackson counties, right. Republican, for joining us. Congratulations on your invite to the White House. Thank it's you, quite sir. an honor, and, and let's hope the state benefits from it. I hope so. We'll have more of Inside West Virginia Politics. We're going to talk medical marijuana after this break.